where a skid extension was placed to allow us to have the proper stroke. And in this unit, we also put a secondary in order to handle a greater amount of gas because the amount of gas that the well was producing was a large and significant amount. And the pumping unit was a significant enough size we could now move that gas and be able to move more fluid. Uh, there it is on a mark unit, on an air balance. And those were just some of the ones that we put it on in the Indian Basin field in New Mexico. Now the features of the compression system were to one, relieve the back pressure in the formation to allow the formation to more readily give up oil and gas than it would normally. Because if the pressure in the formation is equal to the casing pressure, what's going to happen? Not a whole lot's going to move back and forth. Well, you don't want it back and forth, you want it to one on one way. Uh, also, by relieving any gas interference or gas locking, it allows your pump to be able to work at a more, uh, you know, just to work better without having to have any more maintenance issues there. Uh, in some instances, people have put together, you know, multiple wells that might have high or uh, casing pressure problems where they can go and manifold them together and by just using a single gas compressor compression system we can manifold several other ones and still get the same effect with the economics of just having one compressor working on three or four different wells. Uh, it also replaces other types of compression systems that usually have a higher maintenance cost than like a skid compressor. You know, once you have a skid compressor not only do you have this, the compression system itself you also have the engine that drives that compression system to be maintained, operated, paid for energy. And then that was what we just talked about. There's very few moving parts. They're all manufactured for hazardous environments. We have them in, uh, in this instance, the environment is very corrosive from the standpoint of H2S. It doesn't bother the units at all. There are no electrical controls. <laughs> They're easy to install in four to six hours. They're very portable, so if they, for whatever reason, are put on a well that maybe the well plays out and you want to move it to another well, as long as the specifications of that well and the pumping unit work for that specific compressor that can be moved, it's very quick to pay payback. Uh, <coughs> there's no noise and zero carbon emissions on a beam compressor because it doesn't have an engine using the engine that's already on the pumping unit. It doesn't create any emissions because it doesn't have an engine. Uh, the additional energy requirements it doesn't have and pumpers like the low operation. This is basically the maintenance of a beam gas compressor. It's very minimal as far as from the pumper side. It's nothing that's really uh, nearly what you might expect off of some other type of a compression system. And the fact that the, the main parts of the system, the seals, bearings, and cylinders, are manufactured to last three to ten years. So it is a very long-lasting device. Uh, currently, they're in operation in virtually all oil-producing countries in the world, and they've been around about 30 years. This type that we operate and we sell, there's about 6,600 of them. Uh, PI, Productivity Index. Uh, most of you here, I th would think, would know that, except probably me. See, nobody's listening. <laughs> here are where my operator, Bubba, was going to talk. These are the case studies we did on four different wells. Ten of them were put in on the Indian Basin, and we just made the assumption that 65 bucks is our, our oil price, 4 bucks is our gas price, and everybody can live with that. Uh, in the Indian Basin, most of the wells were in, they were all in the later stage and they were looking for ways to maximize the life of the production. Uh, they chose the beam gas compression systems to be able to do that. And in order to, for the, si the units to be sized out, we took the specifications of the pumping unit, what type it was, what size it was, downhole specifications, what kind of pressures were they currently seeing, what kind of production were they currently seeing flow line pressure so we knew how much it was going to do what we needed to discharge to. 
Uh, the units were installed without any concern or stress carried to the pumping unit, which you know meant that the operating company didn't have to worry about any stress fractures to the Samson post, anything going wrong with the skid, and because everything's clamped onto the walking beam, clamped onto the skid, or clamped onto the Samson post, there's no effect or no injury to your equipment. Uh, specific cases, back pressure gas interference we talked about. In the first case study in the first